The hordes are of course the end game challenges in Days Gone. There are 40 of them in the open world and you need to kill at least 3 of them near the end of the main story to see the ending. Including one of the bigger ones that you likely already encountered earlier in the game at the old saw mill. But now you gotta take them out and I got some tips and tricks for you how to easily clear hundreds of enemies in this game. So let's get into it, a like on the video would of course be super appreciated and let's go. In my best weapons you want to get early video, I already discussed the very powerful offhand machine gun that you can get by defeating 4 hordes. So the sooner you do that, the sooner you get this very powerful gun that will be better than most of the other weapons that you can get in this offhand slot and it will be great against the hordes as well. Because that is really the thing, you want to use machine guns, assault rifles, live machine guns in Days Gone versus the hordes. And I even think that overall these guns are the best in every situation, but especially versus the hordes because the individual targets are really easy to kill, like only two bullets in most situations, but there are a ton of them, so being able to shoot a ton of bullets really fast will really be the key. And the first weapon that is great for against the hordes is the MWS in Tucker's Camp that you can buy after reaching Trust Rank 2. And after that the US 556 is amazing. You need to reach Trust Rank 3 at that same Hot Springs Camp in order to get that one. And they can also buy the MG45 Light Machine Gun. So my point is that I really think it's smart to have a free machine guns in your loadout. So really one for every slot so that when fighting a horde you can switch between them when you need to reload or when one is like completely out of ammo. The magazine upgrades that you can buy for some of these weapons at the merchant where you bought the weapons will be really nice to use as well. When you reach the Wizard Island camp, so around two thirds into the game, you can buy one of the best assault rifles for the hordes, the Chicago Chopper that has an insane rate of fire, impressive damage as well. And okay, not the best accuracy, but when you have a horde in front of you, it doesn't really matter because you will just be emptying your gun and you will hit the enemies anyways. It has a big magazine as well and that will of course help you carry a ton of bullets. Another great weapon that you want to get at the merchant in the Wizard Island camp is the RPD. And that's basically an upgraded version of the M. G45 with more damage but less accuracy again doesn't really matter though and to get both guns you want to reach trust rank 1 for the RPD and for the chopper you need to reach rank 2 and both have also magazine upgrades on trust rank 3 so you also want to get those and you will get there eventually by just following the main story missions or by doing some activities in the highway or crater lake region that is nearby so yes totally get machine guns over shotguns or repeaters when fighting a horde. So the basic horde takeout tactic will be run, turn around, empty a whole magazine, then run when the enemies get too close or when you have to reload. Careful though that the enemies don't attack you from multiple angles because they will. So make sure that you get all of them in front of you. An amazing example is with the old sawmill horde so where you can run over this bridge nearby and you will have all the enemies follow you over that bridge so in one straight line. So they cannot surprise you from behind and this gives you an amazing opportunity to shoot your gun at the enemies as they will be easy to hit and it makes them extremely easy targets for explosives as well. Because that will be another important way to take out these enemies by bombs, grenades and the special napalm molotovs that you will unlock near the end of the game. Throwing this will create this big explosion burning a lot of the enemies in the area but also the enemies that run through it. So a few moments later you will see the XP come in from the free curse that you just burnt. So this will be the most effective when you throw it when there are a ton of enemies in one place. You can already find the pie bombs earlier in the game and actually craft them as well two verts through the game by using a small pipe gunpowder, box of nails and also scrap. And how I use these is throwing them on the ground where I'm running so that it takes out the enemies that are running after you. And this will be a guaranteed way to deal a ton of damage to the hordes. This works also great with grenades that you cannot craft but you can actually buy them at the merchants if you meet the trust requirements. And I think you can find the grenades in the world as well. 
Either way, these are really nice to throw before you start the fight with the hordes when all the Freakers are in one spot as the explosive will really take out a ton of the enemies. Another tip is to use the explosives in the area like the barrels and especially the trucks that will explode and kill a ton of enemies that are around it. So try and kite the Freakers to these spots in the level, make sure that you are not too close to the explosive so you don't get hit yourself and then shoot it. You can use the focus to buy more time so you can shoot the explosives when the enemies are still near it. Doing this successfully will really help the fight a ton. But there are more smart ways to so-called kite the horde like going down ledges or through small openings. The Freakers will namely not be able to do this or are not as fast as you, so it buys you some time to look around and then shoot with your gun. Or you can use this time to try and throw a well-aimed explosive, of course. You also got these traps that you can prepare ahead of time, like place them at the entrance of the cave that the Horde is in, so that when they go out, the explosive goes off and then it will already kill some enemies. Or place it near a barrel for example in the area or other explosives so that when your bomb goes off the other explosives go off as well. It did not really work out for me here sadly because I did not expect this lonely freaker out of nowhere that triggered my proximity bomb. No but overall it's a great way to take out more of these freakers although not always necessary since they do cost a lot of the pretty rare crafting materials. Like especially when cleaning up hordes after you finish the game, there will be many smaller hordes in the earlier areas that you can easily take out by just shooting some bullets and using the focus shot skill. So yes, to take out hordes it's of course nice to upgrade your basic attributes at the Nero checkpoints like the focus for example, but also stamina is great for the hordes so you can easily outrun them or have them keep their distance. I also tend to use the stamina cocktails so I can really easily run away from the enormous group of enemies without running out of stamina all the time. And it will be nice to go to your bike for example to grab new ammo because that's the other thing that is really handy when fighting hordes saddlebags with ammo reveals. You buy them at the merchants in the different camps and when you got them they will be really nice for when you run out of ammo so you can run to your saddlebag just hold X and get the ammo for all your free guns. And the tip I noted in my more general tips and tricks video that went up recently is that it's smart to empty the magazines of all your free guns before you go get ammo from the saddle back. Because then you get ammo back for all your guns instead of, for example, just one that you only use. So then you overall get more ammo out of your saddle backs. When going out and hunting these hordes in the end game, it's also smart to quick save at your bike the moment that you reach one of these hordes so that when you die you don't spawn too far away and can like easily try it again. So yes, I already talked about the stamina cocktails that you can craft with the plants that you find in the world and that will help you a lot, but it's even better when you have the juice up skill in the melee section. And there are way more handy skills that you want to get before fighting a horde, especially in the ranged section because you will be shooting your guns most of the time so enhancing that will be really really smart. So skills that enhance your weapon recoil for example are great but especially the later skills in this ranged skill line like up the ante so you can carry more bullets and the two birds one bullet skill is amazing as well so your bullets penetrate through more enemies because of course there will be an enemy behind the freaker that you shoot in a horde. Quickly reloading your weapons is great, but especially being able to do that when on the move. So totally get the on the move skill. Shape up in the survival section is awesome, just like catch your breath so you get your stamina back more often. And really with these tips and with these skills, I can totally manage myself against the many hordes in this game. And after you are successful, you of course want to pick up all the ears from the enemies to exchange them for money and trust at the bounty vendor in a camp. So now just turn back and follow the trail that you walked with the horde and you can of course also easily see the ears on the mini map as well so you know where to go. And good to know is that 999 of a specific freaker ear seems to be the maximum that you can carry so totally go and turn in your bounties at a camp that you are not trust rank free with before going out and killing the other hordes. Otherwise you will not be able to pick up the ears and that would of course suck. A tip that I almost forgot is that when approaching a horde you want to use your silencer first to already take out some of these enemies before they all turn at you. It 
will save you some trouble in the end. I think my horror tips will totally help you out, right? But if you got some other tips that I did not mention here in this video, then totally let me know in the comments down below. You can also always reach out on Twitter at your Raptor or my Instagram your Raptor. You can find the link to those accounts in the pinned comment under this video. Of course, subscribe for everything Days Gone. I will keep you up to date on all the updates and all the content that is coming to the game. And I will have more tips and tricks coming your way as well. A like on the video would of course be super appreciated to check out my previous video on some general tips and tricks and the best weapons that you want to get early. For now, I will speak to you next time and goodbye.